Well, I'm very happy to be in the fully charged garden studio and I'm joined by a friend that I met for the first time in I think it was 2018, a couple of years ago. We got on really well and it's wonderful to welcome this friend back into the garden studio. This is the VW ID3. This is the fully charged studio and what you're watching is fully charged. <laughs> So a couple of things I need to point out right at the beginning. Um, this is probably going to be a biased review because I'm a, an old Golf fanboy. I had every single Volkswagen Golf model you could possibly have over, I don't know what, 25, 30 years. And they were always incredibly well built, incredibly reliable, really easy and fun to drive, really good visibility. All those things were brilliant in the Golf. And this is effectively Volkswagen's latest Golf. It is the electric Golf. It's about the same size. Uh, it, it, co it costs roughly the same as a, a top-end Golf, <laughs> not the really cheap one, the really expensive one, but you know, it is, it is a, a, a really important first step. Another really vitally important thing, we all know that Volkswagen really, really, I was going to say screwed up, that's not serious enough, they broke the law, they cheated, they lied, they did all their diesel gate stuff, they got caught, they admitted it. It's not like they've denied it and said, no, no, it's not really been accurate assumption of what we've done. No, they admitted they cheated and lied and broke the law. And we shouldn't forget that. So what they've done is they've tried to, to mitigate that by going much further than any other legacy car maker. Much further. The amount of money they've invested in electric cars, 33 billion euros. 33 billion, not million, billion euros so far. They're the only car maker in the world to have signed up to the Paris Agreement, which is to reduce our carbon output to zero by 2050, to zero. The factory where this is made in Zwickau in Germany, it's about a couple hundred miles south of Berlin, is now 100% renewably powered. It's solar and wind powered and massive batteries. That's how they run their factory. They no longer make any combustion cars, they only make electric cars in that factory in Zwickau. And that's where this car was made. That comes in with three types of battery. This one has the 58 kilowatt hour battery. There is one with a 45 kilowatt hour battery, which is cheaper. And there's one with a 77 kilowatt hour battery in this car. So that's the same size batteries in a, a Tesla Model 3 in a much, much smaller, lighter car, which is really interesting. The important point of that is, and I think more and more manufacturers are going to be doing this, is that those measurements, the, uh, the capacities of those batteries are usable energy. So this battery, this car has a it says 58 kilowatt hours, so well, it's probably got a 65 kilowatt hour battery, but you can use 58 kilowatts within that battery safely. So just to say, right on the offset, this is a really, really nice car to drive. So this car will have a range of, this is what, it's always difficult when you've got a car for two days, it's really difficult to really judge the truth of this, but around 200, 220 miles. Uh, I mean, I think it's for, for real, over 200 miles all year round, doesn't matter what the weather's like or how you drive it, you know, you get 200 miles out of it, whatever. I think if you were careful in the summer, you might get up to 240, 230, 240. This amazing thing that I do think is really, really cool. I haven't seen it on any other vehicle at all. And that is when it tells me which way to turn. So I'm coming up to this junction now and it's doing it. It's doing it, it's sending a blue light and it's moving, it's going turn right, go that way, turn right. So you're never confused, you know which way to turn. That is bloody brilliant. I'm not gonna lie, that is the most genius piece of new interface between a human being and a car. I've experienced in 10 years of driving cars that I'm not very good at explaining. That is genius. Now, one of the things it does, and this, this is kind of an annoying thing that, you, that it applies to all vehicles. So for instance, on my Tesla Model 3, I'll be driving right down the middle of a straight road with a wide gap between myself and the curb, and it does an alarm, or out of the blue, in the most random places, often in the same place 
on the on the same road. It goes meep, 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 and it's telling you that you're driving towards the curb. I know I'm not now. I've done lots of experiments and tests. This is kind of does a few of those things. It doesn't me 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 at you because that is really annoying. But it goes ping, and there's it just says please take over control of the steering, and I'm going round a corner steering the car. I think it's important to point out a few crucial things about this car that really do jump it up a notch. A car this size with a 77 kilowatt hour battery, which is the biggest battery range you can get in this car, is really, really impressive. I just think that is extraordinary that they've managed to do that. And when you see the uh, graphics of the MEB platform, the platform this car and all other Volkswagens are built on, really clever system. It's basically a, a big skateboard base with a load of trays in it, and you just put batteries in those different trays, and you you know, that's how you do it. So this one has, will have a couple of trays empty, which means the battery pack is lighter. I want to talk about the solidity feeling in this car. So I'm going over your average standard British road, which has loads of potholes, dips, uh, manhole covers, you know, lumps and bumps in the road. And this feels like the tightest lump of machinery. There's not one wobble or wibbly bit. The suspension is quite firm, but it's not uncomfortable. And it's just a joy. You don't worry about, you know, if you hit a bit of a bump, you don't go, oh God, I don't want to damage the car. It's fine. It's built to take that sort of thing. It just feels really solid. It, 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 you know, and they, they are referring to it as the new Golf in a way. So the reason behind it being the ID3, uh, there are numerous reasons. Um, but the most important one to Volkswagen uh, is that this is their third generation vehicle. So their first generation vehicle was the Volkswagen Beetle, which we all know and was a very iconic and popular vehicle for many, many decades. Then the Golf was the next big change in, in the way Volkswagen... I just got a ding then, said, please drive. Did you see, was this hand on the steering wheel when it said that? Yes, it was. Um, slight complaint there. Uh, so. The Golf was the second generation, and the Golf is, you know, it's, it I don't need to talk about it, a hugely popular vehicle all over the world. Um, uh, and this is the third generation vehicle, and this is the completely redesigned, it's not a converted Golf. You know, you can get the e-Golf, we've had it on the show, it's, which is a great car. There's no question, this is much, much, much better than the e-Golf. It's designed as an electric car, it's not a compromised car. It's, you know, everything about it is the next generation of, of vehicles. It's a really spacious car. This, it feels, in, it feels like a really big car when you're in it. It's very, very spacious interior. That was telling me to take over steering. Is that better? Maybe I should do steering like they do in old films where they do that all the time, but then it does tend to sway the car around and alarm the person that you're follow, that is following you. So from the looks point of view, the thing I love is it doesn't really have a bonnet. Like we've, we're so used to, cars have, the, have a windscreen, then a big flat thing, which is the bonnet, which is where the engine used to go. And then the front, and this one, it kind of blends them all in together. I think it's a really clever design because actually where you're sitting and where the dash is, is as far from the front as it would be in a car with a bonnet, but it doesn't look like it's got one. This is a rear wheel drive car, so there's not even a motor in there. This is really the electronics and there's just, you know, it's a modern car. If you haven't got a laptop and a degree in computer coding, forget it. Nice sound. So that's the thing I've always liked about Volkswagens. You know, they're not like prestige luxury cars, but they have a good, ooh, ooh, choo, choo, really good sound. Front is very, I'll, we'll, I'll deal with that when I'm driving it, but the back, for a Golf, you know, basically, I, I mustn't go on about golfs, but this is basically the same size. This is so much roomier than a golf. Look at that. That is proper, proper space. For a fat old bloke, I'm really comfy in the back. It's got good headrests that you can put up. I'm not putting them up now, but you know, that is very, very spacious rear of a, of a you know, compact hatchback, which is what I call this, a small hatchback car. Small-ish by today's standards. The back, big surprise. Luckily, I'm now cool with these uh, type of openings but that is a big boot that is because I've had golfs that is much bigger than a golf boot
very nicely put together. I mean, just, you know, for a first sort of run of a manufactured car, spot on, very tidy. It's now telling me that the speed limit, now that is interesting. I think there's a few little software glitches, still Volkswagen. It is telling me that the speed limit on this piece of road in the United Kingdom is 90 miles an hour. Now, I know for a fact that that is not correct. It might be 90k, it's not 90 miles an hour. 90 miles an hour, the, the maximum speed limit in this country is 70 miles an hour. And that is clearly saying on both screens, 90. So I'm gonna do 90 and if the police stop me, I'm gonna say, I was doing the speed limit officer. And I think that officer would probably disagree with me. Now there's aspects of this car that I don't particularly like, like the white steering wheel and the white stuff. I think they come in different variations of that. But uh, you know, if you're just gonna love driving it, it's such, such, I cannot express hard enough how comfortable and instantly familiar and easy to drive this car is. Now one of the things I've thought about on this drive, uh, which I'm kind of, I kind of feel anxious about saying it because I've driven so many other cars. Okay, so I drive the Tesla Model 3 at the moment, which without argument, it doesn't matter what anyone thinks, you know, a, a discussion about build quality and all that stuff. But aside from all that, the, uh, 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 currently the Tesla Model 3 is three to five years ahead of any other vehicle I've driven in terms of its range, of its energy efficiency, of the way it operates, the the human machine interface, the driver's experience, the charging network, which is really number one. You know, the charging network just leaves everyone else in the dust. But if you ignore that part of it, the Polestar 2 is certainly a truly brilliant vehicle that I really, really love driving and I thought was amazing. But it is quite a big vehicle, it is quite large. And certainly now I need a small car, that would be much better for me. It's very, very hard not to be tempted that when my lease runs out in a few years time and I'm gonna replace the Tesla Model 3 with another car, the ID3 is now at the top of my list. Now there could be something coming out in the next couple of years that I'll go, no, this is better. But at the moment, this is the car. It's such a, a fun car to drive, it's so, so easy to drive. It doesn't feel like a burden. I'm not anxious about it. It feels like what I'm going to do with the car, this car can do, you know, but in its sleep. So, I mean, I'm just rapid charging it now. For the bants, as young people used to say about five years ago, and I've just caught on to it because I'm old. But anyway, it doesn't, I don't need to charge it, but I just thought I wanted to try it out. It's, this is a 50 kilowatt charger. Uh, it will charge up to 100 kilowatts on a rapid charger. I just love the, I love the look of it. The, the, and the driving experience is just top notch. I just love it. It just suit, it, suit, it might be a personal thing, it suits me. But this is definitely the sort of car I really, really want for the rest of my life. I want a nice little snub-nosed little Volkswagen ID3, I love it. At the moment, they've only released the mid-range battery pack, this, which is the one that's in here, the 58 kilowatt hour pack. 58 kilowatt hours, usable, really important. That's what you use to drive the car. So it's, it's gonna be a bigger battery than that, but the 77 kilowatt hour battery version comes out later this year, as does the 45 kilowatt hour. 45, under 30,000 pounds. 77 kilowatt hour under 40,000 pounds. That's as, or as close as they'll get to tell us. So sort of, I reckon 29,000, <laughs> something like that. But you, this will be a sub 30,000 pound car. I've ranted on enough about the cost of electric cars. We know that, but I do think this is a really special vehicle. I've been looking forward to it being released for a long time. Now it's come out, it really, really hasn't disappointed. If you get the chance to test drive a VW ID3, grab it. Uh, I know that here we're in Milton Keynes at the moment at the Vehicle Experience Centre in Milton Keynes. They have a pile 
of uh, ID3s for you to test drive. And uh, you know, they've already got them there, so they're around. Or go to your VW dealer and have a go. Uh, for the countries where this isn't available, like Australia, it's heartbreaking because this is fantastic and you'd all love it. Uh, in the USA, I don't think it's coming there immediately, but this is just a brilliant car. It's going to be really, really popular. I hope they will be available there. But all over Europe, they're going to, this is just going to set the bar. It sets the bar at super sensible and usable. It's not like high performance. It's not like flash and groovy and massive and heavy. It's, a just, it's just a really great little car. So I'm going to lean on this car now in a classic fully charged lean on a car manner because I haven't lent on an ID3 yet. I love this car. I love the fact that you've watched this show. We really appreciate the support we get from Patreon. If you're of a mind, please do have a look at the link. It's beneath this video. Um, please subscribe to Fully Charged. That really helps us. Please have a look at the YouTube membership. That also really helps us. That's what keeps this show going. We're totally reliant on your generous support. Can never thank, the, particularly our patrons, never thank them enough. And now our many YouTube members as well. We, I want to thank you too. It's really, really good that you do that. Uh, please do watch Fully Charged. That's the most important thing. There's no another episode coming soon. There's an episode about the ID3 on a track coming soon, which would be interesting uh, to see what it really is like when you start throwing it around. I think it's going to be pretty good. Uh, but that's all, as always. If you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>